old school Pokemon here. Today's video, gonna be doing something a little bit differently. Right now, you're looking at my entire TCG player inventory. Uh, these three boxes right here, that box right there, and then those three boxes on the other side of the table. All the graded cards that you're seeing right here are just cards that I got in on consignment, so those will be listed on eBay within the, uh, within the coming weeks as eBay auctions. But anyway, as I'm recording this video, today is Monday, September 12th. I have roughly 37,000 cards listed on TCG Player within all seven of these boxes right here. And in this video, like I said, I'm going to be doing something a little bit differently. I'm actually going to be timing myself to see how long it takes me to actually pull, package, and mail all of my TCG Player orders. I have 1,176 cards to pull from my TCG Player inventory, and... Of those 1,176 cards, they're going into 50 separate orders. Now, this was a very abnormal day for me on TCG Player, and part of the reasoning behind that is because we just had Lost Origin release on Friday, so I have a lot of Lost Origin cards to mail out today, but on a typical Monday, I might have two, maybe 300 cards to mail out, uh, these are all going to be TCG player orders that aren't through the direct program. So basically orders that I have to fulfill myself versus I do sell through TCG player direct as well, where the, through the direct program, TCG player fulfills those individual orders. And then I mail TCG player a reimbursement invoice every, every so often. So these are all orders that I'm going to have, have to fulfill myself. And like I said, I'm going to be timing myself throughout the entire process to see whether or not it's actually worth it to sell individual bulk cards on TCG player. So first step of the process, I printed out this pull sheet. So basically all 50, all the cards from all 50 orders are within this pull sheet right here. TCG Player does a great job of organizing this pull sheet so that all of the cards are kind of in chronological order by the, the set name and then the individual card. Everything is basically alphabetical order. Uh, so it makes the process a whole lot easier. So here is everything that I have to pull from my TCG Player inventory. We have six and a little bit of pages uh, worth of stuff to pull. Like I said, 1,176 cards total. And then just to give you guys an idea on how I organize my TCG Player inventory before I kind of get into a time lapse of me actually pulling all of these cards, everything is organized alphabetically. So from the Nintendo era to the end of black and white, everything is organized alphabetically by set. So for example, we have RCS Boundaries Cost, Champion's Path, Diamond and Pearl. So it's not it's not by era, it's just alphabetically. So we go alphabetically by set, and then within the set, so RCS, we have um, all of the cards are alphabetical as well. Just no matter the rarity, just everything's just alphabetically. When you get into the XY era, I kind of split the XY era. So XY era is a whole separate thing, also organized alphabetically by set, and then within the set ordered um, ordered alphabetically as well. Same thing with the Sun and Moon era. Uh, so that's all of those cards right there. And then the bulk of my TCG player inventory is from the Sword and Shield era. And Sword and Shield is a little bit differently. Uh, TCG player has those listed chronologically by set. So you start off from the very beginning, uh, Sword and Shield base, then you get into Rebel Clash, Darkness Ablaze, Vivid Voltage, Battle Styles, so on and so forth. We've got Chilling Rain, we've got Fusion Strike right there, Brilliant Stars right there. Uh, these are some of the booster packs that I have listed on TCG Player. We got some Shining Fates, Pokemon Go, Detective Pikachu two card packs, and then this is kind of the newer sets that I have on TCG Player. We got Astral Radiance right there. We've got Pokemon Go right there, and then we have Lost Origin taking up the majority of this box right here. This final box is kind of specialty cards. We've got the battle deck cards from the 2021 and 2022 battle decks. We've got deck exclusive cards right there. We've got some sword and shield promos and some league promos as well at the end, but that is everything that I have listed on TCG Player. Like I said, there's roughly 37,000 cards here uh, listed on TCG Player, and all of the cards are just your typical bulk non-hit type cards. All the hit cards that I pull from my pack openings, all of those types of cards are listed on eBay. The only cards that I list on TCG Player are the kind of the non-hit cards. Uh, so Reverse Hollows, Hollows, 
non-hollow rares, uncommons, and common stuff like that. But anyway, let's go ahead and hop into this video. So first step for me is I'm going to pull everything on this pull sheet. After that, I'm going to go to my computer and actually separate all the orders uh, or separate all the cards by the individual order. At the same time, I'm going to print the shipping label or the PWE envelope. And then the final step of the process is to actually package the cards into the PWEs or bubble mailers. Uh, so let's go ahead and get things started. So there's everything that we pulled for all of our TCG player orders. Uh, we got a few packs. We've got this mini tin display and then 1,176 cards pulled for TCG player orders. So, uh, just so you guys know, I did time myself for that whole thing. You guys are going to see this in about 25 seconds or so. But in total, it took me 49 minutes and 42 seconds to pull all of those cards from my TCG player inventory. So like I said, the next step is going to be to actually go onto the computer, click on each individual order, and pull all of the cards from this these stacks right here into each individual order, kind of separate them out. At the same time, I'm going to print all the PWEs and the shipping labels, and then the final step is going to be to package all of the orders as well. Next thing you'll see is all of the orders kind of separated out and me packaging all of the orders. So again, I'm going to time myself for that whole process there so you guys will get an idea on how long that actually takes. Uh, hopefully it'll take around the same amount of time, about 45 minutes or so, but I will be back with you in a second and uh, we'll go ahead and package the orders. Okay, so about hour, 15 minutes later, I have everything separated by the individual order. Um, as you can see right here, these stacks are all individual orders that I'm going to be mailing via first class mail with tracking just because they're too large for um, PWEs. This was my largest order. Um, I don't know how many cards, 200-ish, two, 250-ish, somewhere in there. A lot of the Diamond and Pearl cards are within that order right there. And then these orders right here, this whole stack of orders is all PWE orders. So basically what I do is I go to the individual order, uh, look at whatever cards they're actually purchasing, put all the cards into a penny sleeve, and then the next step, I'll put them into a team bag, put a top loader behind them, and put them into one of these PWE envelopes. So that'll be the next step. Like I said, it took me about an hour, 15 minutes to separate into each individual order, print the PWEs, print the labels. So the next step and final step is going to be to package all the orders and get them off to the post office. So let's see how long that whole process takes me. I had set up a time lapse for you guys, uh, but something happened and it recorded like two seconds and then stopped recording. So wasn't able to do a time lapse. Uh, that would have been kind of cool, but unfortunately you didn't get that. But here is the aftermath right here. We have all of the PWEs. We've got some bow mailers, a little 200 count box, uh, priority mail flat rate box. Um, I did want to mention, uh, so the original part of this video where I was going ahead and pulling all the orders, I had a mini tin display and then I had 15 Pokemon Go booster packs. I'm not going to factor either of those into the whole the whole timing or the whole pricing just because those are more expensive. Um, so that would definitely throw off my numbers. I want to focus on these cards right here, all of the bulk type cards. So I'm not going to be including these two within the numbers, but everything else that you see here will be included within those numbers. And as far as time goes, it took me 28 minutes, 57 seconds to pack all uh, 48 orders. Um, 48 orders and then these two were separate to make it a total of 50 orders. So that is everything. Um, next clip of this video is actually going to be me talking about how long it took me, how much I actually sold, how much I actually made, and all of that fun stuff. 
Okay, so you guys are going to see this entire video as one 10, 15 minute video or so. For me, it's been about two weeks since I recorded the first portion of that video of me actually pulling, packing, and shipping all of those TCG player orders. I was actually on the Pokenomics Patreon last Sunday uh, talking about my business model of selling on TCG player. And these are two of the slides that I used within that kind of presentation that I did within the Pokenomics Patreon. If any of you guys are interested in kind of getting a more in-depth look into this business model, on TCG Player. Definitely recommend checking out the Pokenomics Patreon. But uh, anyway, to get back into this video here, so like I said, 1,176 cards over 48 TCG Player orders. This number was abnormally high. Typically on a Monday or Tuesday, whenever I do my weekend shipments for TCG Player, I typically have between two and 300 cards, maybe 20 to 30 different TCG Player orders. However, because we had Lost Origin releasing the Friday before I uh, packaged all these orders, that is why those numbers were so, so much higher than normal. Like I said though, it took me 50 minutes to pull all 1,176 cards. That's roughly two and a half seconds per card or one minute per order. However, the numbers were skewed a little bit. It would probably have taken me a little bit more time had a, the majority of those cards not been from the Lost Origin set because all of my Lost Origin cards are within one monster box. So I was in that same area for a while pulling a whole bunch of cards. Plus I had two cards where someone ordered a hundred of each. So 200 cards were made up of two individual cards. So that definitely went by a lot quicker. Whereas if those 200 cards were 200 separate cards, uh, different cards, it would have taken me a lot longer to, to pull all of those cards. So it might've taken me a little bit longer had those, those uh, circumstances not happened. But in this case, roughly two and a half seconds per card to pull all of the cards for all of my TCG player orders. Uh, one, one hour, 15 minutes to actually separate the cards into each individual order and at the same time print the labels and print the PWEs. That's roughly one minute and 30 seconds per order. And then finally, it took me 30 minutes to package all of the orders, which is roughly 40 seconds per order. So the total time invested for pulling, packing, and, or pulling, separating, and packing all of these orders two hours, 35 minutes, or roughly three minutes and 15 seconds per order. Now let's go ahead and talk about how much money I actually made off all of these orders. So again, 1,176 cards for a total of 48 orders in two hours and 35 minutes. I grossed $211.28 after all of the TCG player fees. However, you also have to subtract the total amount that I spent on postage, which was $64.53. And then you also have to subtract the total amount spent on all of your packaging supplies. So for me, this included team bags, top loaders, PWE envelopes, um, the, the actual labels that I use to print the, the first class mails or first class packages, the bubble mailers, all of that stuff that I used to package these orders. Total cost for all of that stuff was $9.60. Uh, you take your total amount grossed, subtract your total amount spent on postage, subtract your total amount spent on packaging materials, and you're left with a total profit of $137.15 for two and a half hours of pulling and packing orders. Obviously, this doesn't include the time that I spend actually opening the booster boxes, booster packs, sorting all the cards, listing all the cards on TCG Player. This just includes the time spent actually pulling and packing those orders, $137.15, which might not sound like a lot, uh, considering it took me two and a half hours of work to do to make that, that amount of money. However, when you consider the fact that these cards that I'm selling on TCG Player are all modern bulk cards, my cost basis on these cards is next to nothing, if not nothing at all, because for the most part, when I'm opening modern product, the hits, so ultra rares and up, and the code cards are covering my entire cost for that booster box. So all of the bulk cards 
cards that I'm listing on TCG Player are basically free. Um, and this, this amount right here, $137, is a lot more than what I could have gotten if I just decided to bulk out those cards to a different bulk buyer. Uh, so again, might not sound like a lot of money, but if you're willing to put in the time and the effort for this type of business model, it can be very lucrative. You can make a decent amount of money doing this, uh, like I showed you for this for this one specific weekend. That is all I have for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.